Ross uh, with a group of nice folks who have kindly given their time and energy to reading the text, Life, Arts in the City. And uh, this is the first session of our discussion group. Uh, I'd like to begin by giving a brief overview of the work. I think that'll be a sort of useful guide because there are a lot of details uh, in the work and I think an overview would just give us a, a sense of how all these details fit together. So let me begin by showing you the Mobius strip. Oh, it's a strip that's originally uh, has one continuous surface to it and it has various stages and the point of continuous surface is that the beginning is the end. So my, my, the big idea of the book is that um, as a species, human beings are completing a 50,000 year old cycle of history beginning with gathering hunting society and going through various stages such as uh, agriculture, uh, agricultural empires, um, eventually feudalism and mercantilism, the bourgeois period, to industrialism or industrial capitalism, to what I call um, information age, gathering hunting. And so that um, the beginning 50,000 years ago uh, is when folks uh, who are the ancestors of everyone who's living today uh, left Africa and uh, originally went to uh, India, then to Australia, eventually to the Middle East, to China, uh, and eventually to Europe, and people in Asia went uh, across the Bering Straits to North and South America. And so eventually the whole world was populated in that way. Um, and in that uh, trek, uh, we, went on, we went as a species uh, through various stages of development uh, signified by modes of production, such as uh, as I say, gathering, hunting, agriculture. And the point of the Mobius Strip is to show that we've uh, completed a certain cycle, or we're about to complete a certain cycle, or we could be completing a certain cycle, uh, because uh, 50,000 years ago, we were gathering and hunting uh, nuts and berries and animals, killing animals. Now we're gathering and hunting information, so that makes us information gatherer hunters. And so in that uh, circuit, we see norms of that previous society re-emerging. So for example, uh, in Parkdale, uh, which I live, there are great, uh, the, you, have many, you have many agencies uh, that are, uh, distribute uh, energy and food. You also have many uh, groups, local church groups and service organizations that also do the same thing. Uh, and that's part of this recurrence, I think, of gathering hunting society in which people lived with each other. Maybe there are maybe 50 people at the most that you knew throughout your entire lifetime, and that uh, people shared what they had. Uh, there's a piece, there's a section I quote from John Lane Deer, I believe, I don't know if you have that in your section, which I do, in which he talks about how uh, before the white man came, civilization, quotes and quotes, came. If you needed something, you uh, were given it. And uh, you see that same spirit in uh, Parkdale, in which people, out of a sense of abundance, um, give of their time and energy and are gratified by that. So you have this reoccurrence of sort of egalitarian sharing society based upon those norms of abundance. Uh, and um, poverty was unknown, just as riches were unknown. Poverty and riches are um, cultural categories. So having few material possessions, which was the case with gathering hunting, didn't mean, didn't mean that you were poor. I mean, let's be clear about that. And so in fact, gathering hunting talks really has a sort of abundance of spirit, a musical spirit that I think is being uh, understood again uh, under current conditions of electronic information gathering. So for example, Napster, you know, Napster would, you, through Napster, you were able to upload and share various pieces of music. Anyway. Okay, so that's the basic overview. I you just to say a little bit more about what you had just mentioned about seeing the sort of the signs of gathering. Okay. Yes. One of my questions just related to that is with what is what what is that is information and because you just used examples of food. Right. Sharing food as which is analogous to gathering yeah, hundred and fifty thousand years ago. But right. how does information play into that and just and I don't just elaborate on all that. Okay, uh sure. Uh, may I ask you Josh, could you sort of move that microphone closer to you when you speak? Yes. Okay. So, well, I, I want to refer to a popular movie called The Matrix. Has everyone seen The Matrix? 
Okay. But there's a scene. Yes. <laughs> right. There's a scene uh, in The Matrix in which uh, I think it's the end of the first of uh, the trilogy in which Neo, the hero, the sort of info-gatherer hunter who's a computer hacker, right, his job's Mr. Anderson, he realizes he sees everything as information. It's just these sort of green dots. And so that's what electronic technology makes us aware of, that everything is just everything, human and non-human, all these identities and categories that we think are so separate from each other, when sort of reduced in that way, are just information. And so um, that also accords with the insights of Cla Claude Shannon, who's the father of um, communications theory. And he argued that information is different from meaning. So that we have information doesn't mean we necessarily have a meaningful life. And so the information always has to be processed in some way. Like what do we do with what we, what we have? What do we do with the stuff that we have? And now 50,000 years ago, uh, when we were gatherer hunters of actual things, we were also gathering information, but the information was very concrete. We didn't observe in the sort of technical way how everything is just data. But that's what we were doing. But it wasn't obvious that we were doing that because we didn't have technology to, to measure that in that sort of electronic, mechanical way. But I mean, they, but nevertheless, I mean, throughout history, for example, with, Her with um, Pythagoras, you had the notion of energy and strings and music and that how everything is just a sort of overtones of uh, this energy that's sort of flowing through things. And so when, when the native people in Australia talk about um, dream time, you know, they use, they have something called song lines to communicate their stories. And so you think about a song as a sort of form of energy, a form of energy transmission. Like when people sing songs in church or in synagogue or in the mosque, they're sort of transmitting some sort of energy that becomes, mm, and the um, sort of Hindu, becomes in, in sort of Western thought, the amen. So, um, amen signifies a sort of choir, if you like, the sort of uh, coming together of various energies to produce some sort of sense of reality, which is called, you know, the life that you lead. So, it always, it's always been that way, but now with electronic, electronic technology, it's more obviously so that, in fact, what we're doing in our lives in making sense of the information flows that are always coming in on us is, in fact, processing information. Now, the other thing is that, that you know, as electronic gatherer hunters, we are subject to, every day, to series of messages, whether commercial messages, images, texts, whether iPods through the internet, uh, that continually assault our senses, so to speak, so that as contemporary people, the messages that we receive in one day exceeds the messages that a medieval person, for example, ex received during the entirety of his or her lifetime. So the, the, the sheer volume, increase in volume of messages and signs reduces the significance of any one sign, and that's you know, it's called channel surfing, for example, and that makes us aware of the sort of chaotic mess of signs that sort of is the sort of database that is our lives, and then we have to make sense of it. So that's what I mean, gathering, hunting information. We're also, in a way, through that gathering action, we are uh, framing things. We are trying to somehow put things in relationship to each other. We're trying to understand how one thing connects to each other and you know, how we ought to live our lives. So I don't know, Josh, does that answer your question in some way? So are you, would you say that the, the, the act or the process of gathering and hunting is that quest for making meaning out of the information? Yes, I do. Because I yeah. think that helps to clarify, because before I was confused and thinking that the gathering and hunting was just the sort of the, the mere possessing of the information. But what you're saying is that the information is constantly sort of just there and almost coming at us yeah. you know, so much that we're not even hunting for it, but, but so the hunting is much more of a maybe a synthesizing. Yeah, well, it's hunting us, I guess. <laughs> As, mu as much as, as we're hunting it. Now we're aware. Yes, indeed. That's the sort of the double turn that society has made. Right. That's the Mobius strip. That's. Yes. Yes. So it's not. It's not. A, it's not the. It's not a circle. It's not. It's not that we've returned to where we began, but we returned to where we began, having been where we've been. Yes. And sort of. Yes, indeed. That's aware of. Oh. 
<laughs> not only hunting and gathering information, but uh, uh, being aware that it is information that we are hunting, hunting and gathering. Yes, indeed. And that's the twist in the Mobius Strip. That's not just a, it's not a simple circle of return. It's sort of the same monotonous sort of form again, but it always has this twist to it. Do you want to see one? <coughs> okay, so that's right. That's that's right. That's a good observation that we are we're aware of what we've always been doing, but what we were doing in a way unconsciously. Mm. So we're aware we're now have the consciousness of doing what we did before unconsciously. So in a sense, we, what we did in a sense before was sort of been a dream. <laughs> And now we're waking up from the dream and seeing that all these categories and identities, these religions, these philosophies, whatever the categories are, are just really ways of processing information. But as much as that's beautiful, and I, I think I would affirm that whole idea of a, of a turn and, and just an increased awareness, mm -hmm. whether it's self-awareness or just almost like a human consciousness coming more aware. Don't you think that's kind of, like we could get very arrogant and think that we've, we've, we've come from the, we, we've completed this cycle or we've, 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 we've had this twist and we've become more self-aware, mm -hmm. but we're, we're probably still in this, in a long process. Well, the, yeah, yeah, I mean, so maybe yeah, that's 10, right. 10,000 years from now, or, you know, maybe the planet will be destroyed by then, probably. But